yeah, he was there and he was gone. And like, we're, like we used to joke that we're going to put him on a milk carton or something. And like, whatever happened to, to Brian Lee? <laughs> So we've got a bit of follow-up on the pay-per-view. Uh, it was suggested okay. that you were going to feud with Brian Lee on the road after Barely Legal, but he was dealing with a neck injury at the time. The two of you never... I don't think you ever did a singles match, did you? Uh, no. You tell me... Oh, okay. Uh, Brian would head to the WWF late June and form DOA with Crush and the Harris Twins. What caused Brian Lee's neck injury? I don't know. Uh, the end, Brian's end time <clears throat> in ECW... Uh, we got along great. Uh, Brian is not a conversationalist, or wasn't there. Uh, not, not that he was off-putting in any way. He got up with the boys and sit around and talk. But Brian wasn't one to sit around and say, hey, this happened to me, or Paul did that, or you know, whatever. So he was there. He was part of the triple threat that reconstituted triple threat with Candido. <clears throat> and some short period later, excuse me, he was gone. He just disappeared. And I hadn't seen him again. Until about a year or two ago, that was the next time I'd see him at a Russell Cade, Russell Con, somewhere like that. Um, yeah, he was there and he was gone. And like, we're, like we used to joke that we we're going to put him on a milk carton or something. And like, whatever happened to to Brian Lee? Um, I think he saw the writing on the wall uh, that you know Paul was using him from the Triple Threat as being the glorified enhancement guy. If he wanted to get somebody over, he'd feed him to Brian put him over on Brian and Brian would go. And uh, my guess would be that probably most places know how these things operate. Vince probably contacted him or vice versa. And Vince said, come on up. we got something for you, um, which would eventually be the fake taker thing. Oh, no, no. That was, builds, that was actually beforehand. Heights. That was in 90. Oh, that was before. That was 94. That was. Yes. That was That's right. Before, and the, yeah. and the, the, uh, the, the gimmick was after the, uh, the uh, DOA, the biker thing. DOA. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm sure that Vince probably had that in mind when he's talking to him. Yeah. You know, he, Vince comes up with an idea and then he, he looks for the, the, the peg to put into that hole or who best fits that. And, uh, yeah, but Brian just disappeared overnight. It was like, he, he was here and then he wasn't. And none of us had ever heard any story as to why, at least I didn't. And none of the boys that I spoke to heard anything. Uh, uh when you saw him a year or two ago, did you ever like pin him down and say, listen, why did you disappear for 20 no. years? No. He was walking, I think, to or from the bathroom, back to or from his table, and it was like, "Hey, brother," you know, like, like just a wave thing, and didn't see him again after that. But, um, you know, it's and the other is like I was not privy and, and really didn't get my nose in to like what other people were making, and you know, like was he being paid enough, not being paid enough? Uh, you know, I'm I'm sure knowing Brian, like I know him because he's one of the guys. He's a good guy and a good hand. It was probably, you know, like Paul giving him some, that's all I can afford or whatever, and then getting a call to or from uh, one of the other federations um, that probably pulled him out of there. You know, and thinking, like, hey, I'm gonna, at this stage of my career, I don't want to be the guy that get other guys over. Um, and and it's, it, it's not a good or bad thing. It's what people want to think for each of their careers. Each one of us is ultimately in charge of our careers. So 